there's anything that looks weird, let me know. So uh, when, when we talked about this uh, uh, originally, and, and I'm looking for a little bit of guidance here, and I'll follow up as necessary. But when, when we talked about doing uh, this topic, it was, you know, cryptography is just generally of interest to me, encryption, the ability to protect and, you know, secure and, and save and uh, transit. And so I, I tripped on the uh, the Google work that they were doing uh, in and around this, you know, this Tink library. And so tinkering is really the, you know, uh, um, the kind of thing where anybody could dig in, dip their toe in. And I, I, I fully expect Bill at the end in his minority report will uh, caution everyone, anyone uh, to, to, you know, really only the professionals at some level should be doing this stuff. And so that, I mean, I would posit that argues is contrary to tinkering with cryptography, uh, but but we'll leave that to Bill in the end to talk about. So, but but when we set this meeting up, uh, John may remember in particular that that it was you know whatever three months ago or so I think, and and uh, so so the only game in town for something that was both cross platform, and you know. Positioned as being accessible, accessible for encryption type things was this Google Tink library. It was really very appealing. And then uh, a new development occurred really around the early in the new year for me. And uh, oh, sorry, n news alert uh, the, you know, Silicon Valley Bank, you all know about this stuff, right? What goes up must come down, not necessarily. But uh, we can come back to that. Sorry, that was a, a news intervention. And this is another thing that maybe Bill will skewer me on publicly and, and uh, viciously. But, you know, to what extent are the Rubik's Cube cryptography and group theory related? I, I, I Fre Frequently, yes. Frequently, they are related. Or frequently, you skewer me. Well, both. All right. Okay. Well, that's what I thought. Um, so, so what this is going to be is kind of a brief cursory intro to uh, introduction to what they're doing in the Tink library, and then you know uh, for, to encourage other people to dig in. And if there's any interest, we could you know craft up some sample software that comes after this that could be distributed, right? But so they pitch it this way uh, that it's it's easy to use. They, they you know they obviously have a bunch of uh, expert experts in the field at places like Google. And so to their credit, what they have done is they have uh, essentially, uh, you know, come up with probably all their refactored code and they figured out that they don't want to be spewing uh, the cryptographic uh, elements in, in, you know, every time they come out with a new product or a new release. So, so they, they probably consolidated it, I suspect, for themselves. And um, and they went to work on it and they put it together into a open source library. These are the example categories, encrypting data, large files, data streams on the left. Uh, key management is something, and I started to you know touch on this with using some of the Google Cloud stuff and didn't get far enough along to have anything to demonstrate. But, but anyways, all of these things, they go in depth on and give examples of. This is, I apologize, hard to see, but I'll post links to it. Uh, but what you can sort of make out roughly on the left is uh, some Python code and roughly on the right is some Go code. And uh, the Tink library is, is supported, available on, uh, for a number of different languages. The two that were, uh, I've done a little bit of tinkering with are both Python and Go. This was something that I really just uh, learned about in kind of putting together some slides for tonight, uh, which which is kind of interesting. So they're as part of their roadmap, they're splitting Tink into multiple GitHub, GitHub repositories, which to me is uh, I guess it was a little surprising. I, I it, it's additional uh, complexification, I would say, of of the platform. And the tooling, and to me, one of the big appeals was the cross-platform nature of it. But uh, and and furthermore, although this is the direction they're heading in, uh, they don't really, you know, they're not. They will eventually, uh, essentially, delist the stuff that's out there today, and they'll 
you know, they, it seems like there's a splintering that's imminent. To some well, extent, did you... Split, yeah, splitting into separate repos um, for the sub-projects actually makes sense to me, uh, given uh, a, a project that I help on uh, did similar. Uh, so uh, just where the level of organization at which a GitHub repo is the right object is not the entire um, program project effort frequently. So I, I wouldn't be too concerned there. So, so I, you know, I did wonder, and and it, um, I'll I'll try and find I'll make an addendum on this uh, to sort of th that will be a slide or two on just how that came about, and and uh, th and maybe it isn't an abandonment, and maybe it isn't uh, you know sort of a de a prioritizing of some and kind of a delisting of others, pu putting at risk, you know, are they putting at risk or decommitting platform support? for any of these different languages. Um, so I'll try and get more on that, but good point, Bill. I, I you know, I, I definitely see what you're saying. A anyways, 2023 is is definitely gonna be a, a significant year for this, it seems, uh, you know, at Google, and it's gonna be taking place throughout the year. And as you can see by the TBAs and the not started, it's expected Q2 sort of stuff. Uh, it, you know, this stuff is happening now as we speak and and so it's obviously in flux uh but that's kind of a cool time to jump in and and try things out you know um what you got to do though is you really have to kind of uh follow things as they develop if you know if you want to get into this early stage uh i i just thought this was kind of a neat uh, up in the upper right hand corner the the essentially the definition of the cryptographic function being a map and uh, you know, for anybody who's done any of this kind of old time math stuff, the, the, the thought of looking at cryptography is kind of an infinite set of, yeah, you, you know, in, involving an infinite set with randomness and, you know, infinite bit strings and, and uh, is an, in, you know, th that's, I, I guess I kind of wish they taught me that stuff in, in, in my math days. Uh, so, so then I started and, and got somewhat uh introduced seduced into this Noster stuff and as john i think could attest i think the way we did it was we we set it up as as the google tink talk and then this Noster thing came along i'm guessing it was around i'd have to go back and look at the emails but uh around the beginning of the year and and so this is you can see in the upper left hand corner uh this fiat jaff guy and I think it's a guy from from uh, what I, what I can gather. Don't know exactly what country or part of the world he's in, but this was really my first endeavor into. Uh, so, so on the one hand, obviously Google is just gigantic, and on the other hand, this this person Fiat Jeff, you know, it appears to be literally one person who was the architect of this. Um, of this Noster stuff. And the beauty of Noster is it's essentially a, it's kind of what I was looking to try and do with some of the messaging using encryption and limited ways for signing or encrypting or identifying. Uh, and so what he did it and, and maybe a year or so ago, it started to, it's just one guy at work and he came up with a specification for uh, the, this protocol for uh, communicating, uh, you know, simple streamed messages. And it, it became really kind of a hot topic right around the time uh, Twitter was being acquired by, you know, was being acquired, we'll leave it at that. And, and because as people were essentially beginning to realize or believe or, you know, spread the word that, well, are we kind of safe with Twitter or, or is somebody going to be controlling uh, what we can say and who can say it? And are people going to start disappearing from Twitter uh, without, you know, involuntarily? So, so Noster, uh, this was only a very recent thread that, as you can see, this guy, uh, Fiat Jeff, uh, posted it. And uh, he's, he's a self-deprecating guy. He, you know, he's brutally, uh, well, brutally is not the right word, but um, he's very transparent, very honest. 
and and uh, extremely informative in the in, in the things that he occasionally posts. And he's he's written a lot of beautiful code, from what I can see. He's kind of multilingual. Uh, the early stuff that he did was that I caught on to was in Go. Anyways, so uh, he he points to this in a way that, and and this is something that if Bill hasn't already noted it, it'll quickly come out because we, all of a sudden we're drawn into the realm of of uh, cryptocurrencies, right? So uh, uh, cryptocurrencies, no matter what you think, and Bill, I think, will have good things to say, informative things to say. Um, it, it, it's inter integral to, to this is cryptography, right? And just, you know, big number theory, we'll call it what you will. Um, but so, so d going down this path, they start talking about things like securing one's identity. And for anybody who's used social media, I won't ask for a show of hands, but um, th th that, you know, the question of identity comes up and, you know, do you own your own identity and, and, and so forth and so on. So, um, you know, here's a number I should, I should have gone back. You've, well, you've seen it now, so you no going back, but you know, there are 1.1 billion people who are not able to formally prove their identity, at, you know, in African Asia. I mean, that is pretty, uh, you know, astounding. What does it mean and how do you come about? Uh, so, you know, many of us, uh, you know, uh, the identity is online, right? What's your Facebook? What's your Twitter? What's your, uh, you know, what's your uh, Gmail address or, or, or pick your topic? And so that's generally what's known as uh, federated identities. And Bill you might even talk about mastodon and for for uh, i'd love to see a show of hands on that or in the chat uh so basically when twitter you apologies if you know this but you know when twitter was bought out people started uh disappearing in droves or in some significant amount because of what was going on and and so the, and a lot of people who migrated you know who well, they weren't going to go to facebook for various reasons um many people who migrated to mastodon or they tried to and and bill has good experience knowledgeable experience in that realm and and uh the problem with mastodon is in some reason well, well we we can get to that um so this this slide is actually this was 10 years from now people will look back on this this day this slide this communication and i i, I would project uh, it'll it'll be uh, you know a turning point in the history of of uh, messaging communications. Uh, so so this guy Jack, who people know as having had something to do with uh, Twitter and and a few other successful business startups, um, he caught on to well he when he was at Twitter he was one of the advocates for essentially an open protocol uh, Twitter. Uh, I don't know if anybody wants to comment on that or has questions, let me know. But it, it, I don't know if it was a year or two before Twitter was sold, but the work had already begun to essentially have an open, open protocol based Twitter. And, and uh, Blue Sky is a name that, you know, is kind of a code name, a project name. And then the, the purchase acquisition came up, uh, you know, pe people scattered uh, and, and Jack kind of spun off the that blue sky project into a startup with a handful of talented people and and they went to you know they went to work uh they had involvement in the pre-twitter well in the earlier twitter days but but then it carried on and they got it's a small group of people and they were uh taking different open source technologies and working them together into an open source messaging protocol okay and then all of a sudden, Jack catches on. Well, he, he's sprinkling money around. And a lot of it turned out to be sort of in crypto uh, monies. And do people know what a SAT is? So an SAT is sort of the, I think, the, the smallest. It's like a penny in cryptocurrency, right? It's the smallest, you know, it's a Satoshi, I think. It's the smallest amount. Uh, that's transactable. And so, you know, uh, Jack had a pretty big, Jack Dorsey had a pretty big uh, put, uh, investment fund and he was sprinkling the money around to sort of uh, do good, uh, hopeful, 
uh, startup innovative kinds of of businesses and uh significant amounts of what he did i think i think were in asia and africa for di for different reasons and and anyways he caught he, he heard about this nostra stuff and 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 he invested and that was an absolute turning point in what i uh, you know at least i see as uh so, sort of the beginning the birth of a of a new um uh, what do they call it in the dot com days you know killer app i it, this might be a killer protocol so uh, i'll sp spin over this because uh some people might not like to talk about bitcoin uh this is a great example though of the risks that are hand at hand so nostra is this technology that in the simplest uh way to look at it it has you've got a private key and a public key so it's like the you know the, the stuff that people are familiar with here for for uh, you know public um encryption stuff the rsa stuff the you know at scale so you've got a, a public key and a private key and the way you create them is is uh it, it's derived from the bitcoin cryptocurrency realm where they have their own kinds of of cryptographic um algorithms right and we won't get into it i don't know enough about it but it's uh, i'll say this it seems to work it's straightforward it's easy to use and it's integral to uh this nostr thing okay so one of the questions is okay well so effectively in nostr your uh, identity becomes a, a a key pair and you've got a public key and you've got a private key and and that you know and the question is how do you tie that public key private key pair to your real identity so they they describe this out of band and you know explaining that it relies on external identities so for instance one of the things i can do is i can put my identity my descriptive name and and you know my everyday name on a website somewhere the theoret that i own or anybody owns in a well-known location map it to my public key and and that kind of connects the dots people so were using any question describe how this is different from pgp which has the same failure mode gandalf had on the previous slide um and we're trying to get rid of um this sounds like they've just rebranded pgp so far so um uh, so a couple of things uh, uh pgp of course was uh, you know an application with the specific uh sort of usage model and and uh, nostr is a uh, kind of a protocol based thing where the the dream scenario is using the protocol uh to to spin up a bunch of different applications uh a, a key element of this is is sort of a relay based thing and bill i forget if you and i talk specifically about this um but the idea is that there are relays which are basically dumb relays it's kind of like you know e almost email servers that w from which where, where you send messages and then you know messages get sent on and passed around um so yeah, to the extent to work, yeah, that's how yeah, that's, it worked when PGP was invented. Um, so you're not succeeding in differentiating. Well, the, the, it, it's interesting. I mean, I'll be honest with you, and I I haven't read everything there is to read about Noster, and and I wasn't there from the beginning, and um, you know I'm not the most up to the minute on it since. But nobody has <laughs> nobody's ever likened it to PGP. So. Uh, in any way shape or form and i i do think and, and i've been upfront and honest despite knowing bill's going to skewer me uh th there there are a lot of seeding uh technologies concepts which in and uh you know overlapping uh technology sets that with roots in 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 cryptocurrency types of things and I've, I've, I mean, I'm not disputing it, and I don't know enough about PGP other than having the early books that were written um, to, to say. But so hold, look, I, I certainly widely accept it, and and we're going to get into a few more slides down the road here that that sort of recognize this as one of the big problems. In fact, uh, I, I think 
it was i don't know if it was that did, maybe i already said it here but there's a story in here oh well it's, it was actually on this this slide and uh, one one of the when when jack put money on the table he basically gave it to fiat jeff and Fiat Jeff, who seems, you know, more interested in the technology than the money end of things in some respects, um, but very quickly shared it with, uh, with, with the guy who had lots of knowledge and experience in kind of the early, some of the earlier uh, cryptocurrency stuff and was very involved in the Nostra stuff. And so they split it more with uh, Fiat Jeff working on the protocol side and, and this guy um, working on the application side. And so they started to spread little bits of money around. And along the way, one of this talks more about the people who are, you know, sort of, um, uh, uh, untrackable or untracked. And, you know, it's one thing, it, it's kind of good, I suppose, for some people to go undercover and, and not be identifiable. But on the other hand, there's a real downside for the people who need to be identified and cannot be, uh, whether it's the unbanked or, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of a real sort of societal uh, thought. A lot of, though, what came from this, and this, this will go to the Mastodon question, uh, not to move away from PGP too fast, but what, what people found, and there are a number of examples of this, uh, Mastodon essentially is... is uh, the kind of thing where people set up, to, it really is reminiscent of the old BBS world that some of us have earlier roots in and where it's run by, a, you know, a sysop for those who haven't heard that phrase in a while. And, and it, and if you sort of uh, invest in that platform, a lot of people, it seems have experienced this with Twitter recently, you invest a lot in it and then somebody pulls the technological rug out from under you, right? And and the purpose of this slide is to show that uh, if you don't own it, the domain, the you know, you, 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 all your your content, your intellectual property, but but even more so, your ability to communicate can be seized. Uh, so so the question really is, what are NIPs? And it's it's obviously a a, a play on words here. Uh, but you know, I don't know if people knew that some places around the state have uh, have uh, outlawed these little nip bottles, which people have uh, complained as being littering, uh, you know, problematic towards towards littering. But but the nips, if if you don't know what nips are, maybe you do know what bips are. Do you know what bips are? So the, the, they're on the bit, Bitcoin side of things, and 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 so the nips. Noster implementation possibilities, uh, essentially, and you can't see all of the things on the left-hand side, but they're specifications. And it's not like the worldwide consortium, web consortium where, you know, they have a really formal process. It's much more, uh, uh, you know, a, a Linux-y kind of flavored thing where, you know, one or two people are really the ones who are the benevolent dictators for uh, the protocol in this case even though they may really not want to be a benevolent dictator, right? So uh, all of these things are readily available for review and comment. And they're, and generally they come accompanied with some code component, right? Uh, so here's another thing that may or may not be a, a, a PGP similarity, but it's, you know, again, it's the, it's the risk of losing you know or, or having imposter identities out there once they get your keys and and you know sort of how do you deal with that right this i'm sorry this is the slide i was actually looking for earlier when bill uh talked about gandalf so this jb55 he's the guy that got the other half of jack's in you know sort of uh, venture uh, early stage capital support. And, and, uh, I'll have to update this with how exactly he lost his Twitter account. But, uh, but anyways, he, you know, what this guy did is he seems to, he's, I think in Canada, uh, and he built, a, for those people who have, are on the Macintosh side of things, he built a Nostra client, uh, w which, uh, functions in accord with the Nostra protocol and a select number of those 
uh, NIPs, the, the, the specifications. It, it's somewhat reminiscent, for better or for worse, of the earlier days of uh, browsers where, you know, in JavaScript, where different browsers would implement different functions and, and uh, technologies. Well, anyways, different clients in the Nostra space and servers, similarly, uh, in the Nostra space, it, implement different types of functionality. So the specification is there, and whether or not you implement that functionality, you are, for instance, your side. I'm glad. Okay, so I'm glad that was off the record. Uh, We're back on. All right, good. Thanks. Uh, so, so the slide on the right here, which is you know number eighteen in this uh, this monstrous thread. Um, one of the beauties, uh, back to the the cryptography topic, back to the you know the tank stuff, back to the actual actually you you know even frankly, okay, there uh, could be some problem. Let me do this, troubleshoot it for a second. Even back to the the, the and and if it's not recording, that's okay. But the the pretty good privacy stuff, right? The beauty of this is that you really can, with minimal code, coding effort, jump in and actually do useful things with cryptography. And and by useful things to me, you know, it's like signing documents, verifying doc, you know, the the, the signer, encrypting messages, um, transmitting those messages someplace, storing them into a database, retrieving them and decrypting them. So is that, is good, I think we're connected. What was that the extent to which people became familiar with, uh, you know, with these online technologies? One of the, and I think, I, I think Bill and I maybe even have, did address this. So, you know, not only is it a risk, well, associated with the risk of losing things, it, the question is, what do you do and how do you do it when you do inevitably lose? The, the the keys right and in yeah, the case you know minute, Brian. say that again i'm not i'm not receiving anything on uh, youtube can somebody else is somebody else monitoring youtube i had been but i stopped i can check again yeah i seem to be hearing you fine YouTube. Can you hear that? I had been, but I stopped. I can check again. Yeah, you know, I seem to be hearing you fine. Yeah, it's, it it sounds like somebody's got a background recording on. Uh, yeah, it's got to walk away, and somebody. Yeah, I was doing that around the phone. Just to figure out what play. I'm but, I'm seeing. Uh, the streaming. streaming is on. So I was hearing just fine on YouTube. Yeah, maybe they, 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 well, anyways, it, it's, it says live streaming's on now, so we'll, we can roll with that. Um, but, but, you know, we, the discussion that we did have is this, you know, the encryption key lifecycle, and Bill may think this is, or anyone else may think this is too simplistic, but it really is pretty, it, and, and these basically are unanswered questions in, in the spirit of the PGP discussion. But but there's there's no doubt about it. People understand that uh, these are issues that need to be resolved. And th there's it's one of these slides in which they point out, interestingly enough, and uh, th that you know if you lose some of your keys, your crypto keys, well, you lose some of your cash. But on the other hand, if you've got one key that has essentially all of your you know, digital identity of content and 20 years of photos and, and you lose, lose it all, you end up that, that guy looking for the, you know, the hard drive that had his, his crypto keys on it. I, I don't know if you heard that. I forget, was he willing, was he offering $75 million for people who could find it in the local town dump or it, it, I might be off by a factor, but he, he was, Offering, you know, a lot of money. So right now, there's, you know, there's no scheme that I've seen for key rotation, revocation, uh, you know, 
issuance. All of these things are really at the at the beginning. But but there are a lot of smart people who are uh, you know thinking about this, and it seems they really want to do this right because they really believe and feel that uh, this is really important, not just for something like Noster, but in terms of people's ability to continue to communicate using, uh, you know, essentially technologies that where, where people can't pull the technological rug out from under them. And, and uh, so I, I, I don't know if people have ever heard of this particular, uh, you know, form of encryption, the, the, the curve that it uses, um, definitely not a, a uh, you know, familiar enough to even speak of it generally. But what I will say is the code has been implemented. It is widely used, at the, 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 you know, the underlying coding primitives. Uh, and, and so it's, it's you know, it, it's at least uh, not going to talk about zero knowledge proofs. I mean, the idea is, that, you know, how, how can you use the, you know, sort of limited information to identify and confirm who an individual is and and but you know some people say that's kind of the future right uh i won't get into the curves maybe bill will talk about this stuff the the beauty of you know on the left hand side at least of those functions of verifying or signing or uh you know key generation the beauty of this nostr stuff is you can go in and if you believe that the cryptographers knew what they were doing when they developed these encryption schemes uh the, the underlying libraries are very easy to use and and at least in in go uh the, the there's really been a remarkable proliferation of platform prototyping that's a lot of p's but uh remarkable proliferation of platform prototyping for noster on on go um, JavaScript using JavaScript, Rust is is uh, you know kind of one of the the most enthusiastic subgroups of developers working on this Nostra stuff. Uh, one guy doing it at the the client level, and a number of people doing it, using it, implementing it for the relay, which is kind of like the you know it's a WebSocket based server in essence. And the vast majority of these uh, proofs of concept, demonstration, working applications are open source. And, and uh, there's a great deal of innovation in and around, you know, the question on the, the, the relays, which is kind of the, one of the questions on the Mastodon servers, uh, which is why one of the answers has been centralization and concentration of big, uh, big businesses, right? Because you do have to maintain servers and you do have to assemble people with the talent and the ability beyond this, you know, group that we have here tonight, maybe, uh, who can do some of this stuff on their own. And so that tends to lead to a concentration. Uh, so, so the remarkable, remarkable, you know, set of opportunities out there to work with these different languages is, is, um, is pretty pretty cool. So uh, you know, identity. We're all tied up in the 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 crypto curves. You know, elliptic curve technology is uh, is a whole specialty that that other people are better to talk about than than I am. The, the beauty of this Noster, and this is where it gets into the um, it, it almost starts to bleed into the realms of cryptocurrency and you know the level one stuff, which is you know on the blockchain, and then the level two stuff. They talk about, you know, the lightning protocol and zaps and these other ways of of people are weaving into the the identity, the the, the DNA of Noster, the different ways of, in, you know, giving thumbs up. Right. So it's not just the thumbs up, but it's one of these little, you know, uh, zaps that that gives you a little bit of a very small fractional um, uh, um, amount of money essentially. Uh, th this decentralized ID uh, solution stuff, uh, uh, you know, it's out there. It's on the, at the W3C site. 
uh, you know, the, the, my, my recollection is the big browsers, uh, companies voted against this, this decentralized ID thing. Uh, I guess Mozilla most actively, I think ultimately Google sort of, uh, you know, fell in with it, but, uh, you know, the, the DIDs is that's again, early stages. I don't know what PGP used for, uh, you know, identity D did bill, did you were, were there? It was pretty, pretty good. It was the kind of thing. It was like more of an add on to existing email systems. It didn't provide the whole, uh, the, the identity was your key and your email address, which were tied together, um, by sending the si returning the signatures in the web of trust back to the email. So, yeah. uh, as, as, as with, uh, either Mastodon or Noster, uh, proof of identity by demonstrating you control a URL, um, it, it's a limited degree of identity, but it's what limited identity there is, is verified. So it, you know, it really doesn't seem like it, it, it should be that hard a problem. Uh, I, I oh, just... Identity is a very hard problem <laughs> because for some purposes you need uh, government certified identities and for other uh, purposes you need uh, very anonymous identities that uh, the government people with hobnail boots can't map to a a, an actual person to come kick their door in their face in. Uh, there, there's a wide range of identity solutions required, and it's not one size fits all. That's why right. it hasn't been solved yet. So, so they, you know, and, and they, um, you know, and those are some of the underlying uh, motivators, right? This, the same reason that some of the underlying motivators of cryptocurrencies are, the, you know, the idea of uh, people being independent and and uh, you know being able to, in some some sense, uh, decouple from from and uh, one of the big driving fact, you know, anonymity, right? Of in in transactions, um, there, there are probably others people have in mind, but but some of the stuff driving the Noster. Uh, sort of bandwagon is is uh, you know part of it is maybe the ability to communicate uh, anonymously, but but it seems an overriding uh, technological ar architectural motivator on this is censorship resistance. So you know there's been a lot of talk about w what the Twitter. Uh, algorithm is in terms of how things are selected and what you get. And it's, you know, it's like with the Facebook feed, uh, what is the algorithm by which you see, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't, I don't know what they did recently in the last six months, but it, it in the last three months, it seems like that for the Facebook usage I have, uh, you know, I'm getting uh, uh, way more f Facebook, you know, uh, friend suggestions, right? And it, it's actually become more transparent as to how they're making these recommendations or these referrals or these connections. But, but anyways, the whole censorship resistance thing and what the uh, algorithm is for presenting and sharing information, because most of these relays in Noster are open, it and and you know you choose who you follow, and it tends to be more of a, you, you can filter. And in those nips that I, you know, it, it talks about, it's a basic, it's very it's relatively simple protocol in terms of, uh, you know, and beautifully tied together. But it is censorship uh, resistant. This one, I just, well, you can see the, the date on this is February 6th. Uh, and, and this is how, you know, misinformation, I suppose, get out there. But, uh, and I mean, they say what's, Noster, the Jack Dorsey backed social network. So generally speaking, people, you know, in, in the development community 
although I see it as a potential social networking component, but they don't really see it, I don't think, as a social network. Um, it, it is backed by Jack Dorsey in the sense that he did put uh, money on the table, which has allowed them to uh, essentially incentivize through you know, through various, hey, if somebody implements this, we'll pass this along. But it, it's, I don't know if his, his other startup is still, but I'm sure it's 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 still moving along. Uh, but I just saw this headline and it's like, wow. Okay, so here actually is, uh, you know, NIP1, which is the first specification element. And, you know, you can get by with just implementing a couple of these things. And for all of these there seems to be code floating around in a language that you are probably familiar with. Uh, and it's it's a pretty neat way to go. So not only are they using, you know, keys and encryption uh, for your identity and for your, you know, essentially your user uh, name and key pair, but they also use it to, uh, you know, of, of course, for signing and verification and, and, uh, and identification. Uh, you know, uniquely of the the each and every event, uh, which, you know, which is routinely signed. And then if you send the equivalent of a, you know, direct message encrypted, then, it, you know, it's encrypted. And uh, it, it's easy enough to have done enough where, uh, you know, I was able to get the relay up and running. Some of the relays have uh, you know, Postgres databases in the back end or SQL databases in the back end. So for somebody who's looking to string together, uh, you know, a messaging slash, uh, you know, database slash relay communications platform, which might be useful in certain small business or big business or project related activities. This has a lot of different directions that it can go in. And then, so this talks about, you know, the communication between the clients and relays. Uh, again, really pretty basic formats, basic JSON arrays. You know, you can get to be pretty good at JSON pretty quick if you aren't already. Uh, it's it's fairly well uh, spelled out in all of this. So, uh, you know, the, the, the bottom line is uh, if you have a specific, you know, bank account application kind of thing, um, you know, maybe you need to hire uh, cryptographic specialists to make sure that you get all the stuff right. But, uh, and, you know, and maybe libraries like Tink and all its different platforms, uh, if they continue to be supported, I, I think this does raise questions about, okay, wh what happens when these uh, cryptographic uh, libraries implementations are no longer supported? The, the open source stuff that we, I think, kind of talked about last time a little bit, this, you know, this idea of, uh, of the risk of uh, involved in using a portfolio of open source components and, and the burdens on the application provider when the open source team project goes away or, you know, splinters or disintegrates which, which uh, you know, there's a lot of heavy lifting to keep these things running. So the question becomes, well, how do you, you know, will there be more natural, uh, you know, end of life uh, declarations for open source built projects in the future uh, because they become unsupportable? And, and the beauty of this Nostra stuff is the simplicity. And 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 it, just for a note to end on, if there are any questions, and uh, for Bill's minority report to kick in. But uh, th the beauty of this is that it seems simple enough, and but but also robust enough, uh, sort of cryptographically, that it, it's it's got legs to be around for a long time. So so arguably the simplicity of this Nostra protocol and the open source nature of it. And the fact that you can really get in and tinker with this stuff. You can write code. Uh, you can challenge yourself to maybe learn some new technologies and skills. Th th that I think that's a recipe for not only widespread innovation, which is what, you know, Jack and, of course, Jack's, uh, Jack's signature interest in this 
he he was certainly one of the first people to get uh, of any public uh, notability to get Noster keys, and you know he he posted it to Twitter, and the people started to follow him, and so it, the combination of uh, recognizable name, you know, even de minimis kind of investment, but also a technology that is straightforward enough and apparently robust enough that it can be spun out in many different ways. I think it's got a recipe for success in the future. It's not just Linux, but it is open source. Uh, you know, clearly it, it runs well in, in, uh, mostly I've used it in the Linux environment and, and, uh, and and the the hesitancy and this is where I'll turn it over to Bill if if there are no questions but it is that there is a lot of interest or overlapping talent which is in the cryptocurrency space and I, you know I think we'll see more and more applications where there's kind of hybrid uh, development work that goes on you can you can do Noster stuff without the crypto. You can do crypto without the Noster stuff, but we are seeing, you know, the Venn diagrams on these things is more overlap. So any questions or thoughts? It was interesting. Of course, I was trying to fix this stupid live streaming. Finally got it corrected. Good. Seems to be several minutes behind in my screen, but I'm not going to worry about that. Yeah, it sounded like it was. Well, I, I'll be honest with you, and, and you know, and honestly, Jerry, thanks for saying that because uh, that really is the message that uh, you know that I think is worth getting out there. Uh, that th th this is interesting and it's actionable, right? So, you know, anyone with the interest i think can take action and in the links that are in some of the slides and i'll add some more before i send them along to john to share but uh there's beautiful you know there's essentially fully crafted from my experience pretty you know reliable robust relay server code so it also it opens up the door to you know learning more about web sockets and these other things that um but, but also they've spun out a couple different uh, relay types where, you, you know, there's just kind of an open relay, you know, no charges associated with it. There's another relay that filters based on uh, pre, you know, kind of whitelisted keys. And there's another relay and actually, you know, this guy Fiat Jeff had, had uh, sort of given the blueprint on it for a, a pay as you go relay and i don't think it's purely commercial i don't think it's at all you know commercially uh driven to make necessarily money from it i think it's more from the standpoint of recognizing for it to be sustainable you, you know it help this is another model right which is it's like the newspaper subscription thing you pay for it but then it, it gives you maybe a less spammy environment, right? They, they've got other ideas out there on, on you know, I mean, this is one of them, how to cut down on spam. And and uh, and one way is to, you know, charge a, a, a small fee. And and the sense about the, net, the Mastodon problem, which is kind of like the, the, you know, and I think I can legitimately <laughs> at least relate to this as, as a one-time... Uh, one of the the old BCS uh, bulletin boards that that we were running it is you know if you get an angry sysop who pulls the plug and that was your connection to a lot of other people the, the idea here is that you know relays are lightweight easy to set up and and you're always going to be able to find somebody who will essentially be the courier for your messages so so I do think that's the the main message it, there's something here and it is pretty interesting. The Mastodon problem? That there's more fear, uncertainty, and doubt FUD in your comments on Mastodon than Microsoft ever deployed against Linux. Um, I think the minority uh, report has begun.
the, the there, uh, there was there was recently uh uh and, you know I, I i might be over zealously responding to it but there was recently and bill you probably know right off hand uh, you know a fairly significant mastodon server community it's not it's not just the server it's a community right and where the uh the 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 sys the, the equivalent to the sysop what do they call them on mastodon the person who runs the you know the uh, I, I don't know if the specific name yes there was one specific node right. where the guy running the node was running into real life issues he could not continue his node um at, dutifully he couldn't do what he needed to do to keep it healthy um, and stay healthy himself. And the community had grown such that uh, his prior neglect at appointing co-operators years ago, who would be thus trusted by the whole community on that node for him to turn it over to them, since that hadn't happened, there was no way to build trust in and successor uh, operators. He complied with the community um, agreement that he would give notice before shutting down so people could use the Mastodon Fediverse uh, migration tools to migrate to a new node and take their followers and follows with them to the new node which preserves their identity. Um, so, uh, so he, he, he followed the compact, did not pull the plug without notice. So it is fear, uncertainty, and doubt to say, pull the rug out from underneath. Uh, it's nonsense. Yes, it's possible that somebody could have a node crash irrecoverably. Um, and then you wouldn't get the chance uh, to, to migrate decently um one, one hopes somebody running a moderately decent sized node knows how to do backups um but you know uh, the the case that you are citing as the problem is proof that the community is healthy and it works and so it is either ignorance or bad faith to use that as fear uncertainty and doubt i presume you pick this line of reasoning up from your uh, crapto bro um, buddies and uh, have been brainwashed and okay I'm sorry um, but you're just wrong um, yeah so I, I just I mean just to be to be clear uh, I mean wherever I heard it was just kind of you know it was it, it wasn't any crypto bro buddies uh, it was you know it was somewhere in, in, in the Twitter verse uh, yeah, so, yeah, people so, yeah. people who tried mastodon didn't like it after 20 minutes and left say all sorts of horrible things um yeah um the uh i'm i look at uh, btc gandalf's posting in this slide deck of yours as somebody who was apparently a knowledgeable member of the Bitcoin community and managed to find just how messed up this new protocol is. Um, and that's ought to be a little bit more convincing than people who aren't using Mastodon's opinion of Mastodon. Um, so far, I haven't heard anything in this presentation that dis differentiates uh, this from Blue Sky and the AT protocol, except that Jack is funding each of them in competition with each other. Uh, well, good for Jack splashing his money around, I guess. And this one is a spinoff of Bitcoin technology with Bitcoin people, which does not give me confidence in their cryptologic maturity um competent cryptologers active in bitcoin um would be an interesting venn diagram uh, and are probably intentionally committing fraud um 
the uh, people who are involved in Bitcoin or similar crypto coins with the best of intentions would not qualify as cryptologically, mathematically, or financially uh, mature. You can check all that apply. Private keys are easier to mismanage. They've recreated PGP's failure cases. Progress needs to actually progress over the previous solution. This isn't even as good as PGP. PGP allowed for key rolling and revocation use cases. Not every case you'd like, but some. Uh, protocol with relays? Yeah, that's that's exactly what Usenet was. Um, we didn't used to connect email directly from the starting point to the ending point. Now it's required. We ban email that flows through relays because that's how you forge addresses. Um, Regarding the SECP 256K1 curve, um, this is the Bitcoin elliptic curve. ED25519 is a good curve. NIST's curve isn't. And a curve that's endorsed only by Bitcoin's cryptologers. Uh, and the, I, I can't take that any more seriously than the NSA tainted NIST curve. Uh, I wouldn't use it for anything that was important. Censorship resistance is a terminology that one hears about, particularly from people who uh, want to censor some people but don't want themselves censored. Um, most people agree something should be censored. We just can't agree on who should decide and what needs to be censored. If this is censorship resistant, it is probably illegal in the state of Germany. Um, because if you can't censor pro-Nazi postings, your network cannot go into Germany. Um, I, I can't say as I'm surprised regarding the Mastodon fear, uncertainty, doubt that the B Bitcoin group think people have a problem with a community with a plain ice requirement. I'm disappointed that you didn't wind up talking about Tink. Um, I would be interested to know what cryptological libraries un are underlying Noster. It sounds like they're Bitcoin libraries uh, as opposed to uh, the salt stack or boring SSL, which Tink is a layer on top of. Um, I'd like to know more about Tink because it doesn't seem to be adequately documented outside of its tiny little universe. Um, but it makes some of the right noises. The important thing is to be using a library like Tink or Salt, which provides big use case uh, APIs as opposed to low level cryptologic primitives. Um, when building applications or protocols. But it sounded like the right sort of thing. Uh, there are special dangers of Dunner and Kruger confidence with cryptography. Uh, it's been widely quoted in the cryptological world. Most any man can create a cipher that he himself can't solve without the key. This mirage has deluded many otherwise brightest minds, including one Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> And the unbreakable cipher that Thomas Jefferson invented has been reinvented once per century since then, at a minimum, uh, considered unbreakable each time and broken each time. So, yeah. Um, get your high level end to end use case cryptology libraries from people that really know what they're doing. Uh, Google is probably good enough. Uh, they're making the right sorts of noises. Tracking is a dangerous word. Identity is a dangerous word. Activism requires anonymous comment commenting for the protections of the disadvantaged. Uh, 
the real problem comes when the advantaged use anonymity to punch down without consequence. And then the advantage will complain about their victims punching up. I do still wonder who Satoshi Nakamoto, Bitcoin inventor, really was. If he indeed was a single person, he had some real math chops, but seriously oversold the anonymity probably. Prop, prop, oversold the anonymity property easy for you to say. So Satoshi probably wasn't an actual information security person, uh, even though he, she, or they had uh, cryptographic mathematical uh, knowledge. Unless, of course, it was intentional malicious indirection, and the whole thing's a... Uh, Uh, set up by uh, certain government agencies. Always a possibility. Uh, if, if we hadn't built Facebook in a Harvard dorm uh, to get pictures of uh, co-eds to snark about, um, the CIA probably would have had to have had their uh, vulture capital arm created to get people to overshare their personal informations to scrape. They didn't have to <laughs> do it because uh, horny undergraduates did it for them. Uh, there are a bunch of things that they haven't had to do because the free market has gone and done uh, something dangerous for them. Uh, which, which is what why it surprises me that they tinkered with the NIST curve so uh, deliberately after they'd been vindicated that they'd strengthened DES as opposed to weakened it. They then ruined NIST's reputation for independence in the more recent decade. It's really sad. Yeah, so so uh, you know, uh, criticism noted and and welcomed. Uh, you're certainly welcome to go to the extent that you know you've got an appetite for it. The the Google Tink site is is seems clean and well documented, and um, and I certainly have not dug into the the uh, cryptological primitives there. That, and and, uh, and you and you shouldn't want to or need to, right? Um. Uh, what concerns me is the lack of discussion about Tink in professional cryptological circles outside of the project so far. It's not listed on the comparison of libraries on Wikipedia. Uh, Bruce Schneier hasn't commented on it. Um, so that there are no independent review comments. Um, so it's, uh, in my mind, it's at the, still at the phase of, uh, first publication, no replication studies, no peer review, uh, journal articles. Um, but the internal documentation by Google is saying the right things. You can substitute a FIPS 140-2 kernel into it. Um, you can mark it, you can build it to be restricted to only FIPS approved implementations and protocols uh, if you're living in that environment. Uh, so they're, they're saying the right things. That doesn't, and, and Google has, you know, some of the best cryptology people that are working inside a big corp. Um, so there, there's some reason to be hopeful. Um, and it wraps around boring SSL, which is a good fork of open SSL, which gives us uh, two feet so that if one of them fails, the other works. 
uh, which is hallelujah. This is a great thing. One thing I'm curious about, um, I wonder if, uh, are YubiKeys still relevant? Uh, and if so, uh, are they usually integrated into the, uh, like this, uh, this Nostr or, or the uh, Google Think thing? So, so uh, Bill can continue on, John, but the, the um, you know, it's, I, I kind of have the same question. So, I mean, what, what the, you know, the keys are you talk about, it's really nothing more than a hardware device that you, you plug in and it's got the information on it. Right. And, and, you know, I mean, I know I bought some maybe four or five years ago for 80 bucks a pop. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think more and more people have gone to, you know, some some variation of a software application. And Bill, I think you and I almost talked about this recently uh, with with some sense of uh, th that that the software applications were insufficient or ineffective. But uh, so, so I think it basically is just a hardware key. And and uh, I, I don't know that there's anything more to it than that. Oh, it, it's more subtle than that. But. You know, Different use cases require different solutions. So uh, YubiKeys are good for some things. Um, yeah, storing your private key only on a USB drive that's on your keychain is another solution. Uh, the software applications are another solution. Some people are absolutely hostile to ever using uh, text messaging as a second factor uh, because high value targets can be sim jacked. Um, but for low value targets, it's a uh, affordable and ubiquitous platform um, that has a high enough cost of attack for low value targets that it's actually decent just when people use it for moderate to high value targets it becomes uh dangerous to have an own goal so is the key that john inquired about is it more of a, a two-factor authentication device yeah, or yeah. is it or, or is it more of a storage device for keys or both it's actually or, a one it's actually a hardware uh, implementation of a one-time password thing that uh, that that's like which makes it like a two factor it's a kind of two factor so it's it's not really a, a key wallet uh and and that's not meant to be a trade no word for, no it, it, it it's it's a different thing than a wallet yeah um you know having uh private keys stored under a passphrase on a usb drive is more more wallety yeah and yeah. they're two different solutions go into two different USB slots. So, so, John, I don't know, does that answer it? So I guess the question is, is there still a role? And in, in basically, Bill was saying it depends on the application. There, there should be a role. And the question then is, uh, you know, it is Noster or Tink, either of your two topics, um, still supporting that technology is one of the multi-factor choices. Well, I, I, you know, and, and to, you know, to continue on in that direction, uh, I don't mean to be dismissive of Mastodon and, and the, to the extent that I have, you know, tried it somewhat, you know, one of the criticisms, I think, it, which I would argue is the same, Nostra has the same problem arguably, which is on the one hand, uh, as in contrast to something like Twitter, the, the Mastodon stuff tends to uh, kind of coagulate around communities, right? Communities of interest. And so the question becomes, how do you bridge over, bridge the air gap to other communities? And so, you know, there are protocols for doing this. I don't know how widely th they are used, uh, but, but, so I just want to give one example of uh, somebody who, you know, I have kind of followed on Twitter, remarkably knowledgeable. They, they have a website 
uh, you know, kind of a word pressy sort of thing, but custom built by far one of the best uh, bloggy type things in terms of sharing files and communications I have seen. Uh, they had a strong presence on Twitter. And then with the acquisition, you know, things got a little questionable. So people went in their mind, they went looking for alternatives. So this is one of, I would say, one of the most successful, you know, uh, pers individuals who's not a gigantic, uh, you know, top 10 superstar. Uh, anyways, th their Twitter profile has them with over 300,000 followers. So, you know, not a small group and over 5,000 people that they're following. So they're active, right? Their Mastodon presence, and, and this is somebody who uh, is active commercially, takes donations, if not, you know, some other form of subscription. On Mastodon, they currently have, uh, you know, basically about a tenth of both of those levels of activity of followers and follow them. I, I've heard similar numbers from journalists who say that despite their number of followers on Mastodon being a tenth the size, they get better engagement from their smaller audience there, which may indicate that there's uh, uh, far fewer bots among their followers. Yeah, and, and, and uh, I mean, it's a good, you know, I, so this is what I'm going to do to to address, you know, Bill's uh, concern. I'm going to reach out to this person and see if I can get them to give me the lowdown because they clearly have a sophisticated, multi-platform, multi-tiered approach and uh, to communicating, right, both on the output and the input, and, and see if I can get kind of a comparison of the, you know, the Twizzfair versus the uh the mastodon sphere and some of the pros and cons the the noster stuff is is uh you know I, i'm not saying that it is the solution in nirvana and i'm definitely not saying mastodon is is not the way to go and and i wasn't cherry picking uh the successes or failures. i mean pe people right up front will tell you honestly noster is too nascent to do anything of you know of, of use with it right sure. so so to go so far as to say that it's kind of the you know uh they're concerned about censorship but it, you know it's so young that that it's too too early to pick any you know uh, to pick it apart frankly because it's picking itself apart uh oh, the, the beauty of it though funding a stocking horse so that there's competition between blue sky and noster is brilliant backing both of them they spur each other on uh and if either of them wins he looks brilliant i agree no i and with that point i completely agree this is smart portfolio technological portfolio management from his standpoint uh you know it's smart financial ma management from his standpoint and it seems to me it, he, he may be less concerned about which one wins he just really wants somebody to win in this space because I, I think he probably does believe that uh, th there are a lot of people out there who need to have these tools available. And so we need somebody to win. And, and, it's, and well, it, it's also possible that they may uh, work for different niches or uh, different use cases. I mean, Mastodon is not a drop in replacement for Twitter. It does not, the community is intentionally different. And some people have been really offended at being told they were expected to behave as less of a jerk over there than they did on Twitter and have either left in a huff or been an even more of a jerk because they were upset at being uh, called on being a jerk. And well, if you don't want to stop being a jerk when you leave Twitter, uh, maybe you should stay on Twitter. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a, it, it's it's um, that's an impersonal well, use of the pronoun you. But anyone who wants to take it personally is welcome to do so. Yeah. The other thing is uh, just to put to put another iron on the fire here and see if I can, uh, you know, if, if we can have another vigorous. Uh, I would assert, and I'm welcome to hear from anyone, 
to suggest otherwise. Uh, whether you believe in cryptocurrencies or not, whether you believe in, uh, you know, Satoshi was a real person or, you know, it was just some kind of AI bot that came up with this thing from the, you know, whether you, <laughs> whether you believe that they worked for. A a AI know, bot is even crazier. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. heard that one. Yeah, or or they they work for this government or that government or you know, and they what whatever you believe, I would assert that cryptocurrency today is one of the most widely used implementations and applications for any kind of cryptographic uh, application software. It, you know, it, it, in the world. Now, well, I mean, that that's, may be the silliest thing you've said in 10 years. Um, you think that's the silliest thing I've said in 10 years? That, it's in the running. All right. Well, it is very, I, well I'm, there, there, I'm, there's, there are very few emails um, sent or delivered that aren't uh, single, double, or treble encrypted uh, today. So uh, the web pages are almost all transmitted encrypted today. Uh, so that saying that Bitcoin and friends are bigger than email and the World Wide Web is just risible. Well, um, I, I, you, you so, so, so you're, 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 you're reaching for straws and you're failing to get a straw. Your, your point is well taken on the, on the email and the web, of course. I'm I, not think, gonna, I think this is a uh, popularity versus uh, quality. Well, it's well, I, the, it's a the, different the, it's a different application. You have quality cryptography on the web and email, and the web and email do seem to be popular. What you have with crypto coins is you have fanatical belief in a solution in search of a problem. Oh, and so you have people yelling about how wonderful it is, except when they accidentally send their wallet to the uh, landfill and so, similar. So, so and, and I don't know if people are using the, you know, fairly recently introduced Apple encryption stuff, uh, you know, wh where you can flip a switch on your your cloud account and everything is, you know, so so that's another one. And, and so 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 let me if, if I could at least modify, you know, the silliest thing that I've said in the last 10 years. Which, which is the innovation, the attempt to innovatively use and come up with new application applications using encryption. So, for instance, I totally agree, Bill. You, you know, you, you knocked me out with the email, and you double knocked me out with obviously SSL and 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 stuff like that, right? And and you know, Apple with encryption. And, I mean, all this stuff. It's widespread, but. But it's it's generally speaking. Give me another example. I mean, PGP. You tell me if I'm overstating this, but it, it didn't seem to win too many usability awards, did it? Right. That, so, that, and that that is its and and security software which has a usability problem is a security problem. And 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 you this know this is why I'm no longer recommending it. Right. And, and, you know, we're kind of in a space now where, where uh, and, and maybe this is a defensible position, which is to, you know, to claim that the ability to, to innovate in some application space in a way that's, that's you know, cryptolog, that, 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 that can use encryption in sort of new and innovative ways. I, it just seems to me that there's something there. And again, on the Mastodon thing, uh, you know, not I've I've used it very little, far less than than Bill uh, conveys. But but it, it, it you know I mean some of the in some of the Bitcoin stuff, of course, it's how old is it now? Is it is it fourteen years old or or you know it's more than a decade old? So it, so it's not it, it's so, running into its planned obsolescence. So but but is that also true of the underlying you know? Uh, cryptography stuff or is that more on some of the architecture of of you know chains the the, and... the planned scarcity uh built into bitcoin combined with its proof of work 
it's running up against a uh, a built-in limit that was considered a brilliant solution uh, to a design problem that uh, ha has other issues. And when you get into global warming, you know, suddenly, unless you're capable of getting electric power for free because you've installed your Bitcoin miner uh, on a compromised server you found on the network someplace, uh, uh, it gets expensive. But the, um, you know, not novel applications, uh, you know, so far, um, South Sea Island bubbles and... Um, Ponzi schemes as digital products is novel in a sense, but it's not really new. So a, a, another one to you know to add to to Bill's column of uh, obviousness, it, you know WhatsApp, right? I mean, if if uh, I, I presume most people have used it, or it, it, to me, it's a remarkable application and and uh, one of the most remarkable developments that I mean, you know, it runs on your computer, it runs on your phones, it's. It's it's and I don't know how, Bill, you might have first heard about it, but I first heard about it from uh, people who had lots of international, you know, uh, exposure. So so that's where they get started, you know, first off. And and of course, encryption was integral to it and has, you know, it's it's it's, it's been kind of a good test bed of user facing technology where encryption uh, kicks in. So, uh, you know, I, point taken, I do think the 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 beauty of the uh the nos the the one of the interesting parts of the nostra stuff is cryptography in, encryptable stuff encryption is it's kind of like a feature that you can easily roll in and work with and i, I from a from a development standpoint i think that's hard to come you know i think there there I'm, I'm not coming up with other application spaces where a developer can kind of in, integrate encryption stuff in their application. And while it's true, the backbone stuff you talk about, the infrastructure stuff you talk about, encryption at rest. Oh, yeah. you, you've, you've got an excellent point there that it is very difficult to retrofit security into release two of anything. So um starting with security uh, in the protocol to begin with is a uh, major advantage boy are we wishing we'd put security uh into the internet uh dns protocol day one because retrofitting it is a nightmare um the uh phone company trusted everybody that was connected to the long line trunks so accepted uh, unsigned caller ID on long distance calls now anybody with voice over IP can forge whatever phone number they want when they're uh, cold calling you with advertising calls uh, because security wasn't built in from day one. So, yeah, absolutely, that's an advantage. Now, if only the security was being designed for Noster by the people doing the security for Tink so that I could believe that it was better than what they built into Bitcoin, uh, their previous product, uh, then you'd have something. The fact that this is coming from the same people at, as Bitcoin is not a uh, fabulous endorsement of, in my view. I, yeah, yeah, no, take, I mean, I, I, take take a look at the anonymity promises that the Bitcoin community made, and how well that's held up in criminal prosecutions for people who went and used Bitcoin for their drug deals, and they're getting convicted. The promises made ab about the security of Bitcoin, uh, there's no there there. Yeah, but uh, you know, 
I, I didn't believe there was ever there there from the beginning, and I was kind of there in the beginning, at least. Well, in terms good. Of you're, was, well, you, you may be brighter than the average crypto bro. Well, yeah, Maybe but it wasn't. It wasn't it, the average crypto bro. It, I'm just that, saying that yeah. this is a community whose cryptographic maturity uh, has proved to be inadequate, and so trusting them with the development of the next great thing. Um, seems sketchy to me yeah but the thing is and i'll i'll have to it's been a while since i read the books but i gotta pull them up but there are a couple of great books out there about you know basically how they track down uh who was the guy out in california who had the silk road thing right and uh and there are a couple of other really big ones none of the things that i've seen and you may know more None of them have had to do anything with, uh, you know, breaking the cryptographic primitives that you are built in. You don't have to break the cryptographic primitives. The anonymity promise based on the cryptographic primitives was horseshit. Yeah, but I, I agree. I, I, but that, at least from everything I know, I, I, and I'm not convinced by anything you've I, said. The, the, that, the, the money laundering prosecutions yeah. where people split their transactions up and swirled them around. Oh well, they still got prosecuted. Yeah, but yeah, but they but and again that and I'm not looking to obviously to defend that or advocate. And what do they have? They yeah. have tumblers is is what they kind you know. And and uh, I mean it's 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 you know it. Anyways, I'll I'll include I'm in the saying slide. the 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 promised capabilities were not delivered. Yeah, but it had nothing to do with the encryption schemes. Well, no, it, it, the, it the, the encryption with... scheme was claimed to provide certain properties. Yeah, but that and this you know... was pu widely published and it was relied upon by criminals who didn't have the math chops to understand that it was horseshit. And yeah. so for the same community to be making privacy, identity, security promises about this new system built on the same libraries um is should not be taken as reassuring um of the uh how well the promises will be implemented this time yeah but again I, and and i'll i'll include the you know a slide on this with the slides i sent to john uh nothing to do with the encryption primitives everything to do with all the stuff around it Noster is not claiming to be, while it's claiming to be censorship resistant, what they mean by that is you can't pull the, the you know, the relay server out from under him because people just go to another one. But, but I don't see anything that claims that, you know, they're, 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 the, they're working to make, give more people access, but nobody's promising that, you know, anonymity or, and, and in fact, people have pointed out pretty clearly in, in, in a way that's reminiscent of the crypto stuff uh, that, you know, there are so many tweaks in and around the, the you know, this isn't Tor um, and, and even with Tor, right? People figure out, you know, ways but to Tor has its out. own problems. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. so I do think it's an, inter uh, you know, I would love to see and, and uh, you know, the, the cryptographic primitives of this versus that. And, 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 but, but again, it, you know, if, if RSA breaks, I think you hear about it. If, um, if these elliptic curves, things break, uh, we should be hearing about it. If, uh, th th you know, any of the stuff in the Tink library breaks, we, you know, maybe we'll hear about it. So well, no, nobody's, nobody serious uh, is publishing analyses of the Bitcoin chosen elliptic curve because nobody in the serious cryptologic but I, I, until the professionals look at it we don't know um the uh And when you say it's not the primitives, you're you're correct. Most breaks in modern cryptography are not breaks in the primitives 
but in the way they're combined in the protocol, uh, the way they're initialized, the way keys are stored. Um, yeah, there, there, are, there have been some primitives that were just so crap they were quickly broken, but you know those don't wind up in wide scale usage. They're just become uh, problems at the back of the textbook chapter. Right. So, uh, so here's one of the books that I'll, I'll put out there. Uh, Tracers in the Dark. Tracers in the Dark. Has anybody heard of that? You know, it's got Andy Greenberg. Uh, the Global Hunt for the Crime Lords of Cryptocurrency. And, and so there are a couple of businesses that spun up essentially to do blockchain analysis, you know, which, which now you, I mean, Bill, you kind of raise an interesting um, thought, right? Which is that some of these things, well, I mean, RSA, public key encryption, you know, other people knew how to do that in, in secret places in the government before before they did, right? And well, they, there were, there were, public key concept was understood, but I don't think it was the RSA. I think it was uh, knapsack or similar. So, so indeed, maybe, you know, the primitives that we sp speak so uh, confidently of not having broken. I mean, maybe there are some that that the people who are the really knowledgeable experts in this stuff know about, and they're just you know it's more advantageous to to, to not disclose it. So yeah, you, you you want books? These are the books you want to start with. So so, uh, so so anyways, I don't know. Maybe we can end on a point of disagreement or agreement, but but it, it's endlessly interesting. And and I, I think the you know I regret not having done more with the tink, uh, but it, it it and you know I'll I'll work up some kind of a demo to include uh, and distribute. But the, the there's a lot that can be done, kind of uh, with some of these other innovative technologies, and and whether it's the next great startup out of the the Twitter you know uh, genealogy or somebody that we haven't heard of yet. Uh, it, it's it's kind of an exciting time. That's that's. If you get sure. a genealogy act uh, application for it. Talk to me. Say that again. If you get a genealogy application, talk to me. <laughs> John, hey, uh, what was that? Can you put those books you mentioned in the chat? And uh, uh, Bill, can you put the ones you uh, showed the, in the chat as well? Yeah, I'd, I'd be I'd be glad to. Um, there's one other one. It it escapes me right now, but. These are unbelievably fascinating. Well, I, you know, they're incredibly fascinating books that that speak to exactly what Bill was talking about in detail and the fascinating, you know, kind of, um, uh, you know, chase for. To, and, and it's it's interesting be, because it does address, you know, some of just the general basic end user flaws in in and difficulties and challenges in in bringing this stuff about but uh, you know at the end of the day the encryption is just math and and it, it's but but actually making it you know sort of useful in your daily life is is uh, is much more complicated I guess so anyways I, I'll let Bill if he wants to have the last word but John and Jerry and others thank you very much. And um, I'll I'll put that book in in the chat. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. Thanks, Brian. Thanks. I appreciate it a lot. Andy, sorry you couldn't get a word in one. You have to unmute. Uh, I had a lot of things there. Uh, you were talking about what's up. Uh, what about Signal as an app? Uh, that's an app that was started uh, with starting from encryption, and now they've added everything else, you know, videos and calls and all that stuff. Uh, that's pretty good. And also, I, I also use uh, Proton, Proton email, Proton mail in Switzerland. And yep, yep. that again started with, uh, you know, basing, basically uh, 
cryptography and then it was encrypted and they've added they're adding uh oh i don't know what storage now and all kinds of other things vpns for example that's another use of encryption yes a couple of good examples there and the 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 silk road thing i think uh brian was talking about that uh that was uh that was basically the the government hacking a tour server and basically monitoring the traffic i thought that's what how they did that maybe i got that wrong but tour has a problem as you that. said silk road one takedown yeah that was uh the government uh owned enough uh tour exit points so they could correlate entrance with exit yeah they kept popping up like mushrooms though mm-hmm well, if you remember from a uh, guest speaker that I brought to one of the Septembers, uh, TOR was funded by Naval Intelligence. That's right. Uh, uh, for their use, not for collecting information, but for secure communication with uh, covert assets. Um so it was in their interest to invest in the infrastructure. If they could also use it to collect information on drug lords, all the better. Yeah, the, the, the Silk Road thing, and, and you know, that's, that's a great point, Andy, that, uh, you know, that, that it, it was different, very different than the blockchain stuff that we talked about. But, uh, but the thing that broke that case was one of the investigators found an email of the person who was the you know who was basically hiring i think technolo- technical assistance and and there was just a you know he 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 gave away his true identity and uh th- which allowed them to you know to do a lot more tracking uh, there, there there were several pieces there that is indeed one the tour is another but uh in other cases uh the uh traceability of uh, the so supposedly anonymous Bitcoin transactions uh, the the traces were were entered in evidence to uh, prove criminal transactions and that that's my point where the the promised uh, properties of the crypto system were uh, were not delivered, so I wouldn't trust uh, promises of properties from people working with the same code base in the future. They may not have fooled you or me, Brian, but it's a, still the general case of fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. If you and I didn't believe them last time, why would you believe them this time? Yeah, no, it's, 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 you know, it took somebody to actually, uh, you know, to prove that this stuff was, you know, it was a lot less anonymous than people thought, but it, it, it kind of seemed from the beginning that it was, you know, that's where it was going to lead. Uh, on the other hand, it's, it's, you know, someday we're probably going to have, that we're going to hear that the algorithm that, uh, email servers, services, or web hosters, or you know, use is uh, you know somebody cracked it, and and we're we're probably not going to know. I, I, you know, I don't know. You know, it's possible we're not going to know for a very long time until until after, it, you know, that they've been using it for a long time and using this this secret access for a long time, and before people realize. And, and, and so switching to a system uh, supported by uh, Ponzi brokers is going to improve life, I see. Bill, Bill um, yeah, no. I, I, by, by the way, I'm, I'm going to put a slide up for, this is not an endorsement of anything except math. And uh, uh, Bill's a cynic. I, I think that's uh, you know, but it's, it certainly has led to a lively discussion. So, so I think the 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 real thing is in 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 looking back of of this, 
it actually, you know, seeing getting exposure to Noster uh, forced me to dive in a little bit into Rust as a language, and and uh, you know, nothing to become the least bit proficient in. But it it does open your mind. To, it it was remarkable because people came out of the everywhere the woodwork. Uh, given that this was an open protocol, given that there were l libraries available to work with, given that there was a, a, a simple, relatively simple spec, and all of a sudden people and people are putting out open source code, right? And and it's in Rust, and I'd never looked at Rust, but you know I managed to get uh, sort of a client and, and and a relay built at least with it, and and uh, you know and and make some changes to it, so. That, that is some of the underlying greatness of the open source. And that's some of the, the cool part about relatively small, manageable, digestible projects that you can really get your arms around it fairly quickly too. So maybe someday in the future, we'll, we'll do another follow on and we'll actually have uh, a working system that people can access. That's, that's what I'll aim for. Yeah, it's great. I'd like to hear more about Tink in the future. Anything else? Thank you very much for hanging in there, everyone. Thank, thank you, Brian. You. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Bill. Uh, Brian. Yeah.